Today, I'm gonna to share with you three tips for getting started in Photoshop. Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's episode, we're going over three essential tips that I think are fantastic things that I wish I learned when I was first starting out in Photoshop. We're starting off with how to use adjustment layers to make changes with your images. We're gonna show you how to use layer masks. And finally, we're gonna show you the proper ways to save out your images. So the first tip is to use adjustment layers for photo editing. Now, the majority of your photo editing can be done with adjustment layers. And the big advantage here is that adjustment layers can be changed at any time. So even after you save your photo years from now, you can come back and make changes to these layers. To create an adjustment layer, simply go to layer down to new adjustment layer, and you can create things like brightness and contrast, levels and curves, which will allow you to adjust your brightness also, as well as colors. You can change your exposure. Vibrance as well as hue saturation will work on colors. Color balance will allow you to make subtle changes to your colors. You can turn your image black and white. You can apply photo effects like making your image sepia. Your channel mixer will do advanced coloring and your color lookup will allow you to add color presets. You can also invert your image, lower the amount of colors with posterize. You can create a black and white graphic image with threshold, use gradient maps to color tone and do subtle color adjustments with selective color. Now in this example, we're gonna use hue saturation to color the water. So we'll go to layer, down to new adjustment layer and over to hue saturation. Let's hit okay. Now here you can change the hue and the saturation of all the colors in your image. You can choose individual colors, for instance, the reds only. You can see the water color doesn't change at all, just the reds in my image. You can even use this colorize option, which colors the entire image. Now in this case, I want this to be the watercolor. So we're gonna just change our hue to something that looks a little bit better. There we go. And now let's go ahead and close that down. We can turn this layer off and on and we can see that it changes the color of everything in our image. So the big advantage of adjustment layers is that they can be changed at any time. For instance, in this case, I wanna change my blending mode from normal to overlay. It's a little bit too dark, but not a big deal. I can simply double click right here on the thumbnail and then I can change my settings. So maybe I wanna make this a little bit lighter. Maybe I wanna increase my saturation and maybe I wanna change my hue just a little bit. That's looking a little bit better. So you can see changing it at any time is incredibly easy and I can always change the opacity to make it a little bit more subtle. So for any type of color or exposure adjustments in Photoshop, I highly recommend using adjustment layers. This tutorial is brought to you by monday.com. If you guys have been watching Flurn for a while, you know we stay super busy here. We make free tutorials on YouTube every single week, and we also release full length pro tutorials on flurn.com twice a month. So monday.com has completely changed the way we plan and create our tutorials from pre-production all the way through post-production. Basically, we can see everything that we're working on at one time. It's a super flexible and bright colored platform. And once we come up with a tutorial, we create a board that helps us track the status of every project and helps us keep on schedule. So we can bring you more Photoshop than ever before. Now, adjustment layers also come preloaded with layer masks. So what is a layer mask? A layer mask will allow you to hide or show certain parts of the layer. So in this case, for instance, I wanted to change the color of the water, but I don't really want to change the color of anything else, right? Like I, I don't want the sky or these rocks to change color. So this is a layer mask, which will allow us to simply hide this effect over top of the rocks and show it over top of the water. So when a layer mask is completely white, that means make this layer completely visible. If a layer mask is completely black, it's gonna be completely invisible. So let's go ahead and start off with making this layer mask black. We'll go to edit, down to fill, and we're gonna choose our color is gonna be black. So let's hit okay. And you can see we have a black layer mask now, and this layer is completely invisible. So now if we wanna make this layer visible just over top of the water, we can use our brush tool. Let's hit B for the brush tool and I'm gonna paint with white. Remember, white makes this layer visible. So everywhere I paint with white on my layer mask is going to make this layer visible. So I'm gonna simply paint white right here over top of the water. 
you can see it's really pretty easy. It's kind of fun actually, just like painting a new color on this water. You can do this with skies and really just about anything you can imagine in your images. I'm just making sure to try to stay away from the rocks because it would, of course, as we know, colorize the rocks as well. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, you can see a couple areas where I just messed up a little bit. Let's mess up a little bit more. <laughs> you can see I painted right over top of those rocks. Not a big deal. Just switch your brush color to black again. So we're gonna click on this little flip arrow. Now my brush is colored black and I can paint black on this layer mask where the rocks are. Making sure that this color effect is only gonna be visible over the water and not visible over the rocks. And I can do this an unlimited amount of time painting white and black until this effect is perfectly outlined just over the water. So in this case, we're using the layer mask on our adjustment layer, but you can also use layer masks on both layers and groups. It's a much better tool than the eraser tool because you can undo making it visible or invisible at any time. Now getting back to a key advantage of using adjustment layers, let's look at our image now. Everything looks good. We are coloring just the water, but maybe it's a little bit too much color. So I can simply double click right here on the thumbnail and I can change my settings. Maybe I want it to be a little bit darker and a little bit less saturated. You know what, maybe we'll go a little bit lighter. There we go. And we can simply change our blue to get a little bit more of a deeper blue. So this can be changed at any point in time and we can even do, with, do things like lower the opacity. I think this looks great. And now we're ready for our last tip and this has to do with saving your images. So in Photoshop, you can save a layered file known as a PSD. And in this case, it would include both the background layer and this hue saturation adjustment layer that we made. I highly recommend saving both a PSD with your layers and a JPEG that you can use to send to clients or upload to the web. So let's go ahead and show you how to save both versions. To save a PSD, go to File and down to Save As. Here your format, you're gonna to wanna to choose Photoshop. This is going to include layers, as you can see, layers is checked. And we're gonna see three beginner tips dot PSD. Let's go ahead and hit save. So what that means is this layered file we can access at any point in time. So let's say a year from now, we look at this photo and say, you know what? I think I colored the ocean a little bit too much. You can actually get back to your file and make changes at any time. So let's go ahead and close this file out. I'm gonna hit Control or Command W to close. Now we can hit Open, Control or Command O. We're gonna go 3beginnertips.psd. Here we are. And as you can see, our layers are intact. So if we decided, you know what, I wanna make that effect a little bit less visible, we'll just lower our opacity and you're good to go. So it's important to save a PSD with your layers intact because it means you can make changes at any time and you don't have to start all the way over again from scratch. The second file format I recommend saving in is a JPEG. This is kind of like a flattened version of your image. It's gonna be great for printing, sending to your clients and uploading it to the web. And as long as you have your PSD, you're still good with your layered version as well. So we have the PSD and a JPEG. You wanna save both. So let's go ahead and save out our JPEG. We'll go to file, down here to export, and I suggest going to save for web. This is just gonna make sure your colors are gonna look great on the internet. Here in our settings, we're gonna choose a JPEG. Quality about 80 is gonna look great and save a little bit of file size. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit save. So I'm gonna put it in the exact same place and then I'm gonna give it a little extension that says web because this is gonna be perfect for uploading to the web. Let's go ahead and hit save and we're good to go. Well, that's it for our three tips on getting started in Photoshop. Make sure to use adjustment layers for light and color work, use layer masks to hide or show a layer, and then always save out both a PSD and a JPEG. These workflow options are gonna mean you can make these changes at any point in time. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you liked it, give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll send you free tutorials every single week. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone. So we're going to show you three essential, essential, essential. Now, if you want to learn even more about adjustment layers, click on the link in the de in the description. <laughs> okay. 
pop, pop, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. <laughs>